Hey everyone, welcome to Altekis. I am Pankaj Rai and in this video I am going to talk about one of the major changes happened with Kotlin 1.4.20 version and onwards. So with this version onwards, the Kotlin Android extensions got deprecated, which means that it's going to have a direct impact on the synthetic view and at the rate partialize. Well, altogether at the rate partialize got lifted from extensions plugin to Kotlin X partialize. But how about the synthetic views? Because by using synthetic views, you can completely avoid writing find you by ID. Whatever IDs which you have specified in the layout, you can access those directly in your Kotlin file. But without synthetic views, is it like again need to write find you by ID? Or do we have the alternative? Well, we do have an alternative. And the alternative is view binding. So in your Gradle, add build feature view binding true. So by this, you are enabling the view binding feature for your app. Now for every layout, until you define it that do not generate the pre-generated class for it, it creates the pre-generated class for that. And that class, the naming convention followed there is whatever is your layout name, in the Pascal case, append binding to that, which means that for this layout, the pre-generated class will be activity main binding. And for this class, it will be fragment user binding. View binding looks quite similar to the data binding, but there are differences between both of them. Data bindings offers you a capability of setting the content right in the XML. Also, in data binding, you have to specify the layout tag here. But here with view binding, nothing as such. You have specified in your Gradle and that's it. To avoid generating the pre-generated class for the layout, this is something which you have to specify. View binding ignore equals to true. Otherwise, it generates the pre-generated class for all your layouts. Now, why do we need this actually? Because synthetic views actually works well, then what is the need for view binding? So we need to find a solution for the null safety and uh, view binding is something which offers that. It offers type safety and 100% null safety. But if you see about the synthetic views, then they also offer null safety. But major issue there is the import file. Say if you have main activity and you have some layout in that and another activity, again, different layout in that. But if both the layout is having a view which is having same ID. Now while importing, if you miss to add the correct import, then that's going to lead a runtime crash. But with view binding, there will not be any such cases. Also, you can avoid writing r.layout.your layout file because of the pre-generated class. So let's see how we can use the view binding. Let's start with the activity file first. So as I said, whatever is the name of your layout, it generates the pre-generated class appending with binding. So here you could see main activity got appended with binding. And on this pre-generated class, you need to call one static method called inflate, which requires layout inflator. So you initialize this object with the inflate. And on this object, just call the root, pass that as a set content view. What is that root actually? So the root is nothing but the parent view group. For example, for this main activity, if you call dot root, you are going to get this constant layout. Now, how about this layout? So I have text input layout with ID TIL user. Here it's ET user. Here it is FL main. This is BT next. So how about getting those IDs? Well, one of the easiest approach here is that if you use Kotlin scope functions, then you could write something like apply. 
you can completely avoid writing this m activity binding again and again because of the apply scope function now you could say something like mbt next dot text or whatever operation which you want to do you can do it here same way we had say et username and if you want to get the value of it you can just get the value of that and if you do not use apply then other approach is like on this binding object call this views so the approach is very straightforward you have the binding object binding object dot view based on the id that's it and one thing which you might have noticed here is that these are specified in the snake case but while pre-generating this class it has automatically converted that to the camel case okay so that's it for activity file how about fragment so for fragment we have two ways to do this the one approach is on the fragment itself as a constructor parameter you pass the layout and when you are doing that it's an obvious case that there is no point of calling the on create view once again so how do you are going to initialize this object so for that inside on view created you could call the bind method on this pre-generated class and pass this view that's it so by this way you can initialize this however if you do not want to use in this fashion then what you could do is that you could initialize this user binding object inside on create view and here what you could do is like m user binding equals to fragment user binding dot inflate and it requires the layout inflator then container and false attached to parent is false now here you have to return m user binding dot root that's it so I know the two approaches works well either you define it as a constructor parameter or if you do not want to do that then you could use the static method inflate so again if you want to access any of the views like TV username then what you could do is like you could call this object say I'm user fragment binding dot TV username dot text and set any value very straightforward approach or if you're using the scope function then you could use something like dot apply and now here you could directly access the views by their name So that was a very short information about view binding. View binding is really small, it's really very simple, and it's not going to take much time to get started with it right in your production application. And because it offers the null safety and the type safety, so it's really something which you cannot miss to have it in your production application. So one more thing about this is the fragment because as i talked about how you could access this in the fragment so let me also talk about fragment ktx so if you're using the fragment ktx then you could directly use something like fragment manager dot commit and here you could use either replace or add specify the fragment which you want to launch then the id of frame layout tag if you have any and then you can specify the bundle right as a parameter of this replace and what it's going to offer you here is that you can access this all bundle so you can have any number of bundle here is specified just with comma specify some key and the value and now in, in your fragment if you want to access any of these arguments then you just need to call arguments dot get whatever key which is specified here Okay, so that's it in this video where I've talked about the view binding 
and also a bit about the fragment KTX. So if you have liked this video then do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe this channel to get the latest videos on Android, Kotlin and Firebase. Also remember if you are not using view binding to your Android application then start using it as it offers a great capability of null safety and type safety. Thank you and stay tuned.